Church. Thank you for joining us online today. Uh, we're so excited you can be here with us wherever it is that you are. I know that some of you are on the road, probably out camping. Uh, burn up some good data. And some of you are just on your couch. And we just want to thank you for plugging in. We have something very special planned for the last weekend in August. So in the last weekend in August, this is our adventure vehicle. We are camping at base camp. And uh, as you can see, these are some of the stickers of the places that we've been. This time around, with COVID and everything, we've tried to stay very local and we've discovered some beautiful places in Alberta. But you do not want to miss one of the most beautiful places. Well, it is actually, it's got some nice views at Base Camp, which is the epic property. Uh, come on out, bring your, bring your trailer, bring your tent, bring just a tarp if you're super tough. Uh, we get started Friday, we go all day Saturday. We're trying to plan some cool activities, possibly on the water, stay tuned. Uh, we'll have more info in the newsletter, as well as uh, we wake up Sunday. And uh, as usual, because of the present circumstances, bring your own food, but we're gonna share some fellowship. And then Saturday, we're gonna have a very special time together. We're gonna have a communion out in the woods. So if you've never had that before, you gotta come in, you gotta plug in. And then when you're all said and done, guess what? You need to get one of these. And you pick a nice spot on your car, and you put it on as you have been to Epic Church. You have been to Epic Base Camp. So we can't wait to see you. That's the last weekend in August. You don't have to do any reservations. Just show up Friday. Things will get started uh, sometime in the afternoon. Uh, for more info, look at the newsletter. But once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Today you have a very special treat, Jody Ann is sharing a message of hope with us. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining us here at Epic Church. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Yay! tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. She no longer has place to run. This part.
Happy Sabbath, Epic family and friends. We just want to thank you for tuning in with us today as we come to just share God's word. You know, this is the day that God has created and in it, he has given us rest. And we're so grateful for the time that he has set aside for us to just come and to just remember him and to praise his name. And I thank God for a day like this. I thank God that I can come after going through such a, you know, rough week and just being able to just not have anything to worry about. So I am happy for this day. My topic for today is trials to triumph. And I just want to share this um, uh, text with you, Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Some of, you, some of you already know it. And so it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And at this moment, I'm just going to invite you to just close your eyes and just invite the Holy Spirit to, you know, be with me as I go through this sermon and as you listen and that, you know, you'll get a message of just encouragement. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we just want to thank you for another Sabbath that you have blessed us with. I want to thank you, Father, just for the things that you have been doing and the things that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you that our hope is not found in man, but it is found in you. And dear Jesus, we just want to lift you up and praise your name. We give you thanks for all that you are and all that you are doing in our lives and somebody's life who is listening right now. We just want to give you thanks. Amen. Wouldn't you agree that life can be so unpredictable? Joys and sorrows, beautiful blessings and distressing difficulties can come unexpectedly. Our life's dreams and plans can change in an instant. We all know this to be true. Look at how things have been since the beginning of this year. A lot of us had plans um, had made lots of plans for the year whether it was to take a trip to the caribbean some had planned weddings birthdays graduations all of which had to be cancelled or to be celebrated differently i know i too had plans for this year you know last year i was able to travel to a couple places and i was hoping this year would be you know i could have travel to a couple more places and get to know somewhere new but that is not happening again amidst everything that is happening my question to you is how can we find peace in such turbulence Horatio Spafford some of you probably would have heard his story but I want to share with you a little bit about him because he knew something about life's un unexpected challenges Horatia Spafford knew something about life's unexpected challenges. He was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Chicago fire of 1871. Not only did this man lose his business, he also lost a child, um, a son who died of scarlet fever. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't imagine you know, losing a child. So I, you know, that pain. But the story comes with even more tragedy. You know, in light of everything that had taken place, you know, the family, he decided that they would travel to England for, you know, a family vacation. And they traveled via sea. 
Anyways, Spafford, some business um, thing came up, you know, um, some pressing business matter came up. And so he had sent his wife with their four girls um, off, you know, to join them later on. However, while crossing the ship, it was involved in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people that day lost their lives, including four, all four of Horatia's children, his precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she wrote a letter, a telegram to her husband saying, saved alone. One can only imagine Spafford's grief upon receipt of that news. It must have been paralyzing to say the least. But on his voyage to meet his wife, Anna, he wrote this song, It Is Well With My Soul. You know, as he was crossing, I believe the story said the captain came to let him know that, you know, we're crossing where, you know, the incident had taken place, the drowning of his children. And, you know, the heartbreak, you know, I've heard many heartbroken songs, you know, heartbreak songs rather. But this song focuses less on what was lost. And I would like you, whenever you have time, just to listen to the words of this song. And, you know, the focus was more on what was lost. Sorry, the focus was not on what was lost, but more on where hope can be found. And today, I will be sharing a little bit about that. You know, no doubt Spafford was shattered by the loss of his daughter, but his heart turned to God in the midst of loss and the work of Jesus to rescue sinners. You know, perhaps we cannot say everything is well with all aspects of our lives. There will always be storms to face and sometimes there will be tragedies. But with faith in a loving God and with trust in his divine help, we can confidently say, it is well with my soul. James 1, 2 to 4, and I'm reading from the easy version from the Bible app. My Christian friends, remember to be happy, even when many kinds of trouble happen to you. Troubles can help you. Hmm. Is James on something here? I'm thinking he maybe had a little bit of my CBD oil, you know, because I think he was on something here when he's writing this, that troubles can help you. How can troubles help us? How can I be happy when I only have nine credits left at Berman University, but I cannot afford to pay for these credits that will earn me my degree? How can I be happy when I've lost a job and my mortgage is due and, you know, you, some of us probably have kids to feed and a host of other bills, yeah? How can I be happy when I've heard that this is it, I'm at the end of my road and the doctor says to you, you only have five months to live? How can I be happy? And, and this is from my own experience where you're constantly in pain and you have gone to the doctors and you can't seem to get any relief. Verse three of, of James says, God wants you to truly trust him. Mm. It says your faith in God will become stronger as a result of these troubles. I don't know, James. <laughs> I don't know. I think my faith will just be fine without all that troubles, wouldn't you say? <laughs> but before we continue on with Sir James or what Sir James is saying here, let's look at a few things. No one wishes for hard times. No one asks for suffering or storms. No one likes to wade through deep waters or hurt rejection or pain or having to find your own way out of darkness confusion or doubt maybe that's why god reminds us over and over in his word that trials are a part of our journey it's what makes us stronger gives us endurance and builds our faith remember that christ also received pain man when I think of all the stories in the Bible, 
I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah. You know, think of Job's journey. Think of the disciples' journey. I don't think I would have lasted a day. Our storms might look different in this life, but they all have the opportunity to change us. My friends, I want to remind you today that God can take what seems tragic and devastating and turn it around for your good. It may not happen as quickly as we would like it. It may even feel like a struggle and we find ourselves just longing for another way. But blessings will come from it. For that's just the way how God works. The good will shine through. Let's go back to James for a little bit. You know how he was saying all that stuff about like, you will be happy when troubles come your way. And you know, I, 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 as I was, I was preparing my sermon, um, I realized James wasn't the only one on something. <laughs> there are other Bible writers because several of them, including Peter wrote the same thing that our troubles, you know, our trials will make us stronger. And in verse four of James, it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete lacking anything. Wow. Wow. Basically what James is saying is that perfection and complete maturity is found only in God. More specifically, James uses the concept perseverance and you know, a few other versions says um, in reference to perseverance use endurance and steadfastness. So he's using this to describe the ability to trust God more and more. Think of it this way, as a runner gains endurance by suffering through another mile. And if you're a runner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So does Christians also gains the ability to trust God through our trials. Each experience grants us a deeper, stronger level of trust in him. In all areas, growth only comes through overcoming difficulty. One author wrote, as long as God's church is in existence, there will be trials and tribulations. I know at some point in my life, I heard somebody say that if you're not going through these experiences, you're not going through these trials or these storms, we need to seriously start questioning where we are within our relationship with God because these trials come to test us, to build us, to, you know, for us to grow and mature. And so if, if you're just going through life and everything is going well, you seriously need to start thinking exactly where you are, where is your relationship with God? Because these things come to build us and to make us stronger in Jesus. We have to understand also, my brothers and sisters, that this warfare didn't just start happening. All this grief didn't just start happening. It's a result of the warfare that started long ago in heaven with Satan. And so as a result of sin, pain is going to hap happen. Suffering is going to come, you know, devastations is is going to come you know the lord never said that such difficult events would be vo avoided one songwriter puts it this way he never promised that the cross would not get heavy that the hills would not be hard to climb he never offered a victory without fighting but he said help would always come in time. So it says, just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary, that old serpent Satan says, give up, give in. I am saying to you, hold on. God is going to show up and he's gonna take you through that fire. Let's take a look at Mark, Mark four. And I want to start from verse 35. Mark 4, and we're starting at verse 35, and I'm reading from the easy version, which is so much better. <laughs> On that same day in the evening, Jesus said to his disciples, 
we should grow, go across the lake to the other side. So they went and left the crowd behind. Jesus was already in the boat. So the disciples took him across the lake. Some other boats also went with them. Then a strong wind began to blow across the lake. Water began to go into the boat and fill it. Soon the boat was almost going under the water. <laughs> Jesus was in a comfortable place. Imagine that at the back of the boat. He was sleeping. Wow. The disciples walking, woke him up and they said to him, teacher, it does not seem to matter if we die in the water. I, I, I can see myself doing that too. You know, we're about to drown and here is Jesus sleeping away. Right. And, and the next verse says, Jesus woke up and he spoke strongly to the wind and to the water. Be quiet. He said, stop. Then the wind and the water became quiet again. Jesus said to his disciples, you should not be afraid like that. You should believe in me. Then the disciples were very afraid and said to each other, who is this man? Even the wind and the water obey him. So I, sorry. So I just want to take a, a moment and just go through that, um, that passage of scripture and, and just try and break it down a little bit, you know? It says on Jesus' invitation, the disciples went with him on a boat. You know, God extends an invitation, just like he did with the disciples to come with him, to join him in fellowship. It also said that there were other boats that went with them. So Jesus doesn't invite you and I, you know, or church epic. It is inviting all of us to join him in union, right? Now in the next verse, verse 37, it says a strong wind began to blow across the lake. Water began to fill the boat. And I just want to pause for a little bit. The disciples are with Jesus, right? Here comes a storm. It says soon the boat was under the water. So the boat is basically sinking with Jesus on board, right? Verse 38, and, and this just blows my mind. The boat is not only sinking, but here is Jesus. Where is Jesus? You remember? He is at the back of the boat sleeping probably drawing snores, I, you know, sleeping peaceful. Like, I, I don't know why I associate snores to like, you know, be a peaceful sleep. But anyways, I, I can imagine that's where my mind is going. Right. And so I want you to just picture this, picture this with me. Right. I'm sure Jesus and the disciples weren't traveling on the oasis of the sea or the Royal, Cab Royal Caribbean. Yeah. They didn't have a cabin, you know, where they could, you know, just avoid whatever chaos and commotion was happening. Here they are on a boat. Yeah. Picture this. Have you, you, I'm sure most of us have gone on a boat, right? It's not one of those fancy big ships in essence they were traveling on, right? The water is now in the boat. So as I'm picturing this, Maybe Jesus himself has probably started to get wet because the boat is underwater, right? So he's probably starting to get wet, if not fully wet, right? And what? He is still asleep. Okay, let's move on. In the same verse, we see the disciples waking Jesus up. Yeah? They're waking him up and they say, Teacher, it does not seem to matter if we die in the water i'm sure like the disciples you and i would feel the same way right it doesn't matter what you say i believe being in a situation like that yeah just imagining being in a situation with jesus on board i would be no man what's going on jesus jesus doesn't seem to care about what's going on we're all gonna die and then the question lends itself to does jesus care yeah does he care for what you and I are going through? I want to just go back a little bit. If you notice in verse 35, it pointed out that there were other boats that were traveling with them. 
but it doesn't make mention at all what their experience was you know were they under were their ships you know were they going through the same things they were going the disciples and Jesus were going through it doesn't make mention but we do hear that there were other boats right but it doesn't say as to what their experiences were you know if they were underwater it it doesn't say what was going on in their boats but i just want to emphasize here that there are different seasons for each of us there will be seasons of fighting and endurance and there will be seasons like that of the mountain top and like i i go back to like it doesn't say what was going on and you know not everybody is going through a storm all at the same time we all will not go through our storms at the same time and i think that's what i'm making reference to to all these people that were also on that ship and all these people in this book called life right we all won't be having the same experiences you know there's this song that is near and dear to my heart and the word says <laughs> for the God on the mountain, he's still God in the valley. He says when things go wrong, he will make them right. And the God of the good times, he's still God in the bad times. The God of the day, he's still God in the night. Friends, what an, assur what an assurance we have in the Almighty. Yes, he's the same God today, tomorrow, and forevermore. So this might be your season, but it will not be forever. Let's take a look at the next couple of verses real quickly here. It says, Jesus woke up and he spoke strongly to the wind and the water. Be quiet, he said, stop. Then the wind and the water became quiet again. Wow. In this last verse, I'm sure the disciples were as amazed as I am that, you know, he just said, be quiet, stop. And all, you know, the, everything that was going on, I can imagine everything was just still and calm. You know, just like before there's a storm, there's this just stillness, this quietness. I can imagine that was exactly what happened when Jesus says, be quiet, stop. You know, who is this man, they said, that even the wind, even the wind and the water obey him. I just want to highlight that after Jesus calmed the storm, he said to his disciples, you should not be afraid like that. You should believe in me. Some storms in our lives, we know this, they aren't going away. And I wish I could leave a different message with you today. But what I can say is that we can learn to sleep through our storms with Jesus by our side. He knows more about us, what we are going through, more than we know ourselves. Friends, this is my message to you today. If Jesus is on board, no matter what storm may come, we should be assured that Jesus is going to say, be still, be quiet, stop does jesus care oh yes he does says the songwriter and if jesus care you and i are okay god can do something good out of our suffering like joseph god was preparing him for a greater work a testimony and i believe he is doing the same through us God is inviting you into a relationship with Him. The end of suffering, trials and tribulations will come when we are in correct relationship with each other and with God. God bless you. Take all I have in these hands and multiply God all that I am and find my heart on the altar again set me on fire set me on fire take all I have 
have in these hands and multiply God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again set me on fire set me on fire here I am God, arms wide Ding dong.